going on, guys? This is Pete from the crazydoghouse.com. They're going nuts today. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about what we did in yoga. <laughs> yoga. Nope. Yoga. This is my ego. This is your muscles. Sometimes you have to let your ego shut up. And I think that's one of the biggest takeaways that I've I've had in a long time with the injuries and and the stuff that's just been going wrong with my body. My body just wasn't feeding into working out and it, it was getting, you know, it's very depressive and it's hard when you can't work out and you and you're trying to do stuff and something just doesn't feel right and your hip is tight or your back is hurting and your shoulders hurting and the hardest thing to do is to do that symbol, which is blocking your ego and controlling your ego. It, it develops fear. It's a change in your thing. It's a change in your schedule. It's a change in the way you work out. It's a change in your lifestyle. So being injured, finding something um, that's tweaky, something that just limits you is very, you could say, humbling. It makes you step back, but at the same time, it's fearful because now you have the fear of, I'm not going to be able to progress anymore. I'm going to get weaker. I'm going to get fatter. I'm going to get uh, mushy. I'm going to feel like shit. I'm not going to be able to do this. And those are the things that go through your head when you get injured or when uh, something happens just out of nowhere. But I want you to know that it's it's time. And I he was talking to a kid, Mike, who broke his leg same time we tore the chest and we were talking. And it was like, it felt like it was going to be forever. It felt like this process was never, like, I was never going to be able to work out again. And that's what goes through your head when you first get injured. But when you start to heal and allow yourself to, to go back, if you guys hear that, that's Seabass and um, Jax playing right now. Who is that? Real quick, I don't know if we can do that. That's what they're doing right now. And, yes, that was a barber chair inside my office. I have a barber chair just in case we have people coming in. No reason, just to have it and sit down. And, um. Anyway, you get fearful of the of what's going to happen next. Will I be able to do this again? Will I be able to do that again? How come I can't do this now? I'm going to get that. And that's the stuff you have to control. You have to control yourself, and you have to let, allow yourself to to think that time is going to heal everything. Time heals everything. Give yourself a little bit. Yes, you have to uh, be stricter on your dieting so you don't gain weight. Yes, you know and that's hard. You know it's a hard adjustment. Do you have to maybe dial it down a little bit for a couple months? Yes. It's a change in your body because you're doing so good. And now all of a sudden this happens and, you know, it's just something you have to come to accept. And I'm coming to accept to the fact that I read my body day by day now. And that process where is working the best for me. I'm reading my body, making sure, okay, I'm feeling good today. I'm going to do what's planned on day. Auto-regulate. If I'm not feeling good that day, as hard as it is, like I want to sweat, I want to get my blood going, I take a step back and I think about, is it really worth it for me? If it's not really worth it for me because of pain and I know I'm going to set myself two steps back instead of one step forward, I just take a stretch day. I go to physical therapy. Um, I do something just to, to get it going. And people ask me, do you go to physical therapy? Go, yes, I do. I now go to physical therapy. I have been. I go, used to go to chiropractic. I now go to physical therapy uh, two times a week probably because my hip is all jammed up, guys. And with my tight hip and my tight groin, it's going to lead to a lot of uh, limping problems, lower back problems, which, you know, I, I have. And uh, at least we're coming down to the source of it, and it's finding out that a lot of my hips are very, very – or my, not a lot of my hips. My hips are very, very tight. And uh, with that, it's pulling, and a lot of my muscles are now inactive. It's very dysfunctional. Um, and I'm working day by day to get that better. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling good. Like I had a good deadlift day. I haven't deadlifted really heavy in a long time. I'm, I'm really progressing my weight small and progressing my numbers. But it felt good to grab weight. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it felt great to move weight. And now today I'm feeling a little tight. I'm supposed to do a crushing workout. I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to go to PT. I'm going to stretch more. I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to recover so I'm ready to go maybe on Thursday. And that's the way I have to auto-regulate and sometimes play my workouts like that. Um, so learning to drop your ego is one of the biggest things you could do, especially in working out and in fitness and whatever it is. Just tell your brain to shut up for once. Just shut it up and think logically of what's going to be the next best decision for my next day.
is this really worth it now? Where it's going to end up killing you a month down the line. And that's where you got to think about it. All right, guys, if you have any questions, comments, make sure you like, share, comment up. Hit me up, we'll answer it, and I will uh, talk to you guys later. This is PPS.com. Peace out. One eye, other eye, one eye, other eye.